big one tonight. The Crown Comba and Chekosi chiefs in Accra have expressed their resolve to support government in finding a lasting solution to the conflict in the Chiponi and Saboba districts. The Great Accra Regional Crown Comba and Chekosi chiefs called for an unconditional end to the conflict. The renewed conflict has claimed lives and left thousands of residents, mostly women and children, displaced. This has prompted two ethnic groups in Accra into action. In a joint press statement, the Konkombes and the Chokosis, with support from all the various tribal heads at Old Fadama, have called for an immediate ceasefire. We, the Chokosis and Konkombes, living in Greater Accra catchment area of Ghana, in the strongest terms, totally condemn the clashes. That the conflict in our estimation was baseless and was between two individuals and not communities and should have been reported as such to the police service in Cherpani. That those two individuals could have spared us the long-standing good relationship and neighborliness existing between the Chakosis and Konkomers, and not in only in the Cherpani and Sabuba homelands, but across the entire length and breadth of the country, and to have reported the, their misunderstanding on the land issue to the police for settlement. They further called for decisive unbiased action against perpetrators to deter others. Either the suppressing of complaints by the police, refusal to prosecute by the courts, killing peaceful demonstrators, or imprisonment of people of a single community while refusing to arrest members of the other community. The Greater Accra Regional Comba and Chokosi chiefs called for an unconditional end to the conflict. <laughs> We should not let what happened yesterday haunt us forever. We must unite today in order to protect our land and people of common enemies. This is the only way we can develop our communities and not through wars and communal killings. Every fighter must lay down their weapons and open the doors to peace. There's absolutely no gain in fighting each other because two individuals have dispute over lands. So let's stay a while longer on this story and speak with Hajia Zuraiwa Tumada from the Anofo side and then Roxane Konde Masun also from the Konkoma side on how worrisome the situation has become for them. Thank you for joining me, lady and gentlemen. So let me start from you, Hadja. How worrisome is this development for you? Thank you very much for this audience. Um, this situation is really very worrisome. Worrisome because it has uh, taken away lots of souls. We've lost so many lives. We've lost so many properties. It's actually brought development to a standstill mm. in the sense that, you know, our community is a farming community. Currently, it started raining. We cannot even farm. Mm. Our uh, hospitals, this morning I saw um, Cherry Pony, the Cherry Pony doctor talking, and he was telling us that the number of staffs available were about eight. Most of them have fled. Yes, are we, because mm. of the conflict. Our teachers are all running away. away because of insecurity. So this conflict has kind of brought everybody to a ransom. Mm. So, so let, me, let me ask you, he, she mentioned a bit about the fact that most of the people in the community are farmers. How is this develop, affecting economic development in the area? How is it affecting that? Okay, let me say good evening to you and a good evening to your viewers. Mm. Definitely, one will expect that conflicts such as this will bring a lot of untold hardship in the area. Already, the place is a very uh, poor area where we do basically farming and sometimes fishing. So if there's a conflict of this nature, you will expect that no activity will go on, mm. which means that there will be more poverty. And this. what is so worrying is that it's a border town. Mm. And if we are not careful, there will be influx of what? This arm activity, Boko Haram activity in the area. And we want to call upon our security services that they should be very mindful of that. Like he said, already nurses, doctors, teachers don't want to go to that area. 
for what teaching hospital activities and there's war now definitely if he post a nurse or a doctor to that area he wouldn't go and that will bring a lot of hardship in the area no farming activity is going on now currently as we speak so it means that food stock cannot be cultivated uh, fishing cannot be what uh, done nothing is, is moving on so yeah. definitely this is a, a challenge that we are all facing and yes. we are calling for over, over the period, well, there have been a lot of measures to ensure that peace is restored in the area, but it appears these measures haven't really worked. So you are from this place. What do you think we are not doing right? Are we not speaking the people's language? Are we not touching the right spots for these measures to yield results of peace? Okay, thank you very much. I think that, yes, um, you know, conflict resolution is a process. And the process, when you miss at certain stages, then it brings about so many problems. Uh, um, so far, I think that the process was going on. It didn't even reach anywhere and it started again. It means that we didn't touch on the message very well. Mm. And security have been a very big problem. The number of security that is always sent there is not enough to be able to calm the situation. So I'm using this opportunity to plead on the government. He's doing so well. He sent a good number and recently he's sent much more. I think we need much. We need more to be able to keep the situation. Because if the security are not enough to be at the risk areas at every time, that is when we have these problems coming, coming up, up again, yes. Mm. Because um, mostly the numbers they send, because they are inadequate, they are sentenced in the town. Meanwhile, the whole trouble is not in, in the, the town. town. The trouble is always at the banks. Outskirts the, of yes, the town. Yes, mm. the, the villages that they think they can use to penetrate. Mm. So if you don't send them at where the problems are always coming from, you have problems have because problems. it has to spark before you call security that something is happening happened here. Back there. Yes, then they rush, and then by the time they get there, the a harm lot has of already harm been caused. Yes, have so been let caused. me come to you. I think that as part of finding solutions to the, the, this issue, we should try and speak the people's language. So, in your language, one message you think we haven't said to these people, say to them so they understand the need for peace in, in the whole process. I'll come to you, just so you also do the same thing in your language. Nabative, Kajome, Ndone, K Nangasulu, Babo, Kajak and Bungani Chaponana, Kage Troba, Kage Trubichaku, Kage Trubichakokbam, Naked Nasulu, Tiak Batabatabak, and Naked Panka Kat, Kalatagging Abuku Santa Burma, Kajama, I am a June development, and Aunt Moba Chabo, Naked Mpusu. Ne nsidu nkate denga nka de bom mo bati abi joku ja ka buku tokwe aku chako ja duweke a brada nka kona ana adu yo nka kona u chako ja ya kweke u kudu yo we cha tumo kan pa ke bin de ba me ke ja kan ya buku tan bo kai cha ke tan na won yina kai ti ya de bom a ban ya no che ka tekal ka tige be be ye ke tan na so that u tin da ge fu wa na tukutop Okay, so for the benefit of those who don't understand what? the language, say it in a, in a line. What I'm that simply said. saying is that yeah. war and conflict will not bring development. Mm. If there's dispute, we should sit down and allow the due process to follow to and follow. allow the government or the authorities to take charge and know who is because of the land they are fighting. And okay, know who, who is the right the owner not for peace to, to prevail? Not okay, Adia, let's hear yours in your language and then you summarize it in English shortly. Njendo mbondo anofa barani biya sokere mdasuna kerashi. Um, deke kuben kuru kaya kerashi kala laka. Anshika nina luambe ya wosuni. Ifama buka bibama. Iti sakio. Sake nsukuma iti barna dongo. Maduma jojo. Mashika na ya kere ya nyasaore. Jandi anofa barani biya so. Nengangam kere. Ya shirisuna kere. Kema ya do ya sakanzi, mtu kujina fena shiri kajande ama ya do ya sakanzi. Nema saware sunu ya kerengu, nema ya gomlantini, 
ne kuru yo de kembe yo bali ne she yaka iba ne iba yo mayani ye mama e kara do maya sakanzu a shifting be su ne 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 ikuru bama doctors me bu kere mate yaka ya ne nurses ne teachers nyin da ti jande nsu shere ye kere ngangam na anu fom kere ka jande am me do sakanzu na ade na ye kuru nya in english summarize it shortly yes what i was trying to say is that I'm pleading with every Anufo and every Kukumba to try and exercise restraint to all these things we call conflict because this is never going to bring us any development. Peace is what will bring us development. Insecurity will only drive people away. Okay. Our teachers, our nurses, our workers in general We'll all Everybody's run away. Yes. Away. So yes. we have to make sure that we, we have peace so that we are able exactly. to live together for development to prevail. Hadia Suerati Mada, thank you so much for joining us. And Roxing, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. You're still watching News at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV Channel 279. So let's do some other stories now. And an official of the National Health Insurance Scheme has been arrested in Yendi with ammunition bound for Tripoli in the Northeast region where escalation of ethnic groups has led to curfew. Mohamed Dueshi was arrested by the Bureau of National Investigative Operatives Sunday evening on board a Metro Mass Transit. The boxes of cartridges which were being transported from Tamale to the conflict zone were concealed under a seat in the bus which was being occupied by a police escort. Sources within the Bureau told Three news .com. The unarmed police officer who has not been arrested was said to have told the security personnel in the area that the bus was cleaned, hence they should allow them free passage. However, the BNI operatives upon intelligence that contraband goods were being transported to the area insisted on searching the bus registered GL2026. Now, security analyst Emmanuel Coating is joining me on the phone line, so we speak a lot more on this development. Good evening to you, sir. You're live on News at 10 on TV3. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Yeah, so this, this evening we, we were hit with the information that uh, uh, an NHIS official has been arrested for carrying contraband goods. How do you receive this message in the fact that we're trying to resolve peace in this area, and now we hear this. In fact, when I heard the news, I didn't believe it initially, so I had to call Yindi, and the police did me confirm there was such an arrest. And uh, the arrest was made by the BNI. So I think we need to commend the BNI for the good job they have done, even though the police insisted the bus didn't contain any contraband juice. They didn't give up. Given that they had intelligence, they were same in the bus. It shows that there's no complacency between the sister agencies when they have information that they want to really search. But there are some significance here. And the significance is that um, the security agencies are not sleeping. They are making sure uh, ammunition don't get to the conflict zone. But the challenge is why the police escorts were trying to influence the BNI to allow the bus to move by saying that they hadn't eaten the whole day and the search revealed otherwise. So the police should, as a matter of agency, apprehend equally these two or three police escorts that were in the bus and investigate why those goods were found even under their seats. Mm. We call this kind of people the spoilers of conflict. And this is the time the defense minister has led a multi-party uh, uh, opinion leaders from both areas. And you agree with me that after his visit, tension in the area has reduced. So we're looking at opportunities where we can move in and kickstart the peace process to make sure we don't fall into relapse. So things like this don't help at all. And mm. we need to commend the BNI for the good job 
And it also sends one positive signal. It means that the citizens are now willing to cooperate with the security agencies.